share it with you, and maybe the Lord will give you something. <clears throat> it's my hope always. <laughs> All right, in Galatians chapter 4, and starting in verse 1, we're going to read, I, I'm planning on the entire chapter, but if we stop somewhere, it suits me. I'm going to let the Jesus lead as he would. All right, Galatians chapter 4, verse, starting in verse 1, it says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth knowing from, from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, went in bondage under the elements of the world. Yeah. Under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Howbeit then, when, when ye know not God, Forgive me, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather as rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the, the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? And I really like that. It says, but now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God. Isn't that just encouraging to be known of God? My sheep hear me, and they know my voice. All right, uh, you observe days and months and times and years. I am, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye you know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first, and am tempted. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the, the blessedness ye speak of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might afflict them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not always when I am present with you. And he's talking about here that how we should be affectionate toward the brotherhood. And that they received him without knowing him, the labor that he would do to them, not in vain. And if it were so, that they would pluck out their own eyes and give it to them. And that's true. He felt the love that those people had for him. And that's how we're supposed to be affectionate one toward another. And not only that, welcoming in new people, as, as far as the word is concerned, converts, <coughs> is, that, is that when the Romans were looking for, for Christians to persecute them and kill them, the one thing that they would look for is the love that those people would have for each other. And that's something that it needs to stand out. It did stand out. And praise God, it continues to stand out with the affection and the love that we have for each other. All right, 18. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, of whom I, I travail in birth again until, until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondmaid was born after the flesh, but he of, he of the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory. For these are of the, of the two, are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which was gendered to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answer and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in the bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not; break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath hath many more children than she which hath an husband. 
Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted, persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. And this is just super huge, awesome stuff. But he's talking about a bit of the church and the, and the true church as far as that's concerned. And not only the grafting in of the Gentiles. And uh, he actually makes comments towards us not, uh, what does it say, insulting the natural branches. But uh, it's, it's just really cool to look at because everybody thought at, the, at those times, and there was preaching going around at those times in Galatia, and you know, uh, the church that was at Galatia. Galatia is like, it's like a, here's Greece and the Mediterranean. I'm going to try to do as best I can with my hands. And right here on the edge is, uh, it goes into Asia. And right there is where the, right there in the center of this huge fat piece, it's not, it really has a really distinct form, but you got the island of Rhodes. And then over here is, uh, and at the bottom, anyways, I was trying to think of the name of that island, but it matters a little. But at the very bottom there was, uh, was uh, you had Athens on the edge, and then Corinth was right on the ridge. But anyways, right there, the, the Galatians, their heritage comes all the way over there, which are the people known as the barbarians is at the time. They were, the, they were the Celts, and they were the Franks. And they were the people, but they actually pillaged. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that, but they pillaged their way all the way over here. So the people's heritage that was at Galatia was not naturally there. They were they were blonde, fair-haired people from way over there. So he's making it clear to these people through this allegory concerning such things, as far as them being Gentiles and being not born naturally of the free woman who is, but of the slave woman. Now, I'm trying to make this clear. I hope I am. Uh, our heritage is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, this is much better, actually. Our heritage is in Jesus Christ. And then we're spiritual children of Abraham. And the motherhood of, of us all is that Jerusalem, which is above, which is free. Okay? And that's, that's the comment made toward the church. And this is where I was invigorated concerning such things. Because we could go much deeper and talk on, <laughs> talk on this entire chapter for a long time. But what I was happy with is, and uh, actually, I think Paul talks about this in Galatians chapter 2, it's, it's good stuff, is that it's only by faith. It can only be by faith, it was only by faith, and it will be and continue to be by faith. When I was born into this world the son of a plumber, that accounted me nothing. If I was born into this world the son of a king, it would account me nothing. Our faith and our dedication and the personal relationship that we have with Jesus Christ and the church, which is the bride of Christ, means everything. Every, and Paul says, I reach toward, pressing toward the mark and the high calling of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's the only thing we can aspire to attain to, is to one day die and be made perfect in Him. But while we're here, we need to be separate. That love that we feel for each other needs to be seen. The truth that we speak needs to be heard. Amen. Pastor, would you dismiss us? Lord, we thank you again for this day that you've given to us. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that we have to come and gather together as your church, Lord, and to uh, worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we just pray that your truth would be uh, spoken here today through your word. Lord, uh, that your Holy Spirit would work in our hearts and lives, Lord, that you would get the honor and glory. Uh, Lord, as we humble ourselves and present ourselves uh, and our bodies living sacrifices for you, Lord, that we would uh, hide your word in our heart, Lord, that our uh, words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart, Lord, would be acceptable on your side, Amen. Lord, that... Uh, we would more uh, consecrate ourselves today, uh, Lord, to live for you and to be uh, witnesses for you. Lord, we just pray that you be with all those that aren't here. Lord, for whatever reasons, just keep them safe. Watch over them. Bring them back safely to us. Lord, be with 
uh, the Sunday school. I look forward and just teach us your word. And we'll give you the honor.